the eyes have it, or do they? We talk to an expert on facial recognition technology and its forensic applications. Seeing isn't always believing. Make sure that you're looking at everything with a critical eye and taking things with a grain of salt. A growing trend, deep fakes, what they are and how to spot one. And one class down, another lined up and ready to go. NFSTC at FIU's second ROTC internship kicks off later this month. This is your forensic update. Before we begin, we are always publishing new forensic science content, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Hello, and welcome to the Forensic Update. Chances are, your face is in a database. Mugshots and even driver's license or ID photos are stored in local and state databases. In certain circumstances, these images could be used as an investigative tool using facial recognition technology. We talked with Brendan Clare from Rank One Computing about how investigators may use it forensically and the limitations of the algorithms. Facial recognition is really a two-step process uh, where the, the first step, the algorithm will take an image or a video frame and it's going to detect every face that exists within those images. And then for each detected face, it's going to create a representation, uh, often called a template, that encodes the facial characteristics of a given face. The other portion of automated face recognition is comparing the two templates, uh, which the algorithm will receive two templates and it'll output a measure of similarity between the two. It also can be used for searching a database. So you, you receive a, one template that you created from a query image and you compare it to every single other template in a database to try to find the closest match to that person. That person is going to need to be in an existing database that that agency has access to. So, so that may or may not be the case. And then if they do, they're going to get back a list of results and, and they're going to have to manually inspect those and, and do a, a real adjudication of whether or not this is the same person. So the technology is a post-incident forensic tool that is very much a manually driven process. It's automated in the sense that it'll exhaustively search the database, it'll bring back the most similar images, but it's not at the point, uh, nor will it be anytime soon, that we're gonna trust the algorithm to have the final say in the matter. Um, a human sits in between that decision-making process. You can watch more from Brendan on this topic in an upcoming special edition of Forensics. Making fingerprint collection faster and more portable are critical updates for the Special Operations Command. The group is developing a contactless smartphone app that would allow operators in the field to take images of fingers. SOCOM wants to eliminate heavy, bulky gear and reduce cost and inconsistencies found in the current sensor-based technology. While a request for information was released late last year, SOCOM may be looking for more innovations and ideas in the next few months. Doctored videos known as deep fakes can be difficult to detect. We sat down with NFSTC's Matt Rudell to understand the issues and challenges deep fakes can present to digital investigators. Deep fakes are fake videos that use artificial intelligence and machine learning to put somebody into a situation that they were never actually in. They can actually take a single photograph off of your Facebook or off of somebody else's Facebook, and they can actually take that single 2D photograph and they can create a 3D rendering of what your face looks like. Once they do that, they can take that 3D rendering and they can rotate it in virtual space and basically make you do anything that they want you to do. For the human eye, it's very difficult to spot what videos are real and what videos are fake. As a matter of fact, it's getting so good that most people, if they're showing them the video, they can't tell for sure if that person was actually there or not. Uh, so obviously this makes it much more difficult for the forensic analyst who's going through a whole slew of videos to determine which ones are real and which ones may have been manipulated or faked. And in a lot of cases, they're actually using the same technology, the artificial intelligence technology, to try to spot these deep fakes. The way that they do that, um, it depends on the technology they're using, but the most common way of doing this is actually looking for resolution differences between the individual that has been placed in the video and the video that's around 
that particular individual. So using some of the forensic tools that are out there, you can actually go through and look at several frames in a video and find where these resolution differences are located. It's a very complex uh, process and it's time consuming. It takes a lot of time. So being able to spot these deep fakes is something that is very difficult, but the technology is out there. Researchers from the University of Southern California have published two papers on new methods to help detect deep fakes. We put a link to the research on our website. For the first time since 1990, drug overdose deaths could be on the decline. Based on provisional data from the Centers for Disease Control, 2018 deaths are trending down. One reason could be the significant increase in Narcan administration, which can reverse an opioid overdose. The CDC says the opioid epidemic isn't over yet, as deaths are still high and there's a growing trend of methamphetamine use and deaths. First responders and the public are still being impacted by opioids. We put some resources and suggested guidelines for safe handling of suspected fentanyl on our website. The second class of ROTC cadets will be arriving at NFSTC at FIU later this month. In its 10th year, the Biometrics and Forensic Internship is a unique hands-on learning experience for these future military leaders. You can catch up on the first class and stay up to date on the second on our Facebook and Twitter pages. From all of us here at NFSTC at FIU, I'm Bill Duffin. Thanks for watching this edition of the Forensic Update.